Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. <laughs> My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWeb Results, and this is... Matt Bertram, PPC Specialist. Hey, have you guys <laughs> figured out that there's something different going on? Both the look, if you're watching, and the voice, if you're listening, is a little bit different. Matt, could you... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Charles, as you know, last podcast was, was his. We found this here at the company. <laughs> it is his mug. We are holding it ransom, hoping that he will come back at some point and say hello. Maybe he'll even drop in on the podcast or something at some point. Um, and standing next to me is Matt Bertram. So Matt, why don't you introduce yourself to the crowd and let them know who you are. Okay. Well, so this goes out to Charles and much respect. So uh, I know he's out there watching. So we just want to say hello there and uh, let's hang out soon. So uh, myself, I guess, uh, I think the reason they brought me in is because I am a Google partner and I'm certified in Google Analytics right. and uh, Google AdWords. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, to talk a little bit about some of my wins and losses, I have definitely lost over $100,000 of my own money in online ventures Ooh. and online net spend. So that is not why we wanted to, <laughs> him to join us, by the way. It's a but, good lesson. <laughs> but I also had some very big wins. Uh, one business I built to $850,000 and made about $670,000 in profit in 11 months. So that is kind of <laughs> one of the reasons we're interested in him joining the team, yes? <laughs> so I've had some wins and losses. I've built some info companies and some other businesses. And really, uh, the power of online media and what you can do with it um, is pretty amazing. And to help businesses is uh, what we're here for. So uh, that's a little bit about my background. Hopefully, that uh, gives everybody an idea of who I am and yeah. uh, what I've been able to do. I'm trying to 10x all these uh, campaigns that we're working on here. and. Uh, we got some really good stuff going on. So Excellent. Uh, I, I can tell you one of the things, Matt's been with us uh, for about a month and a half, almost two months now, and and we are so in, in tune in terms of delivering value to our customers um, and really excited about working with businesses and understanding those businesses because really all of the all of the stuff that we've always done has been a, a collaboration of what's your business about and what do you know about your business what's internet marketing about and all that we know about internet marketing and how do we mesh the two and it really becomes really powerful uh, when you've got a serious interest like a son serial entrepreneurial interest uh, in business so uh, I'm excited that's a nice little brief intro you'll get to know Matt over over the time uh, over time so I feel your pain uh, but we can make it we can make it winning yeah, so, absolutely uh, we've really been able to turn around some campaigns um, definitely could get some testimonials out here some of the stuff yeah. that we've already been able to do in such a short amount of time so, absolutely yeah well this is podcast number 383 as we mentioned already as always we do have a tip from the previous podcast Okay, our tip is focus on relevant, high quality links, not on quantity. Yes, no. it used to be true that there was a kind of equal value between the quality of links and the quantity of links. So it was much easier to kind of outsource to India a massive quantity of link building. Uh, it turns out that's no longer of any value. Quantity does matter, just make sure that they're all quality. And that is the tip from our podcast. Make sure you subscribe and follow Boom! Skyscraping still works. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I talk about skyscraping in, in, in the article today. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that article, well, just one second. We were filmed live here in Houston, Texas, and Matt and I were now your friendly local neighborhood top position snatchers. <laughs> and our mantra is don't be a douche. And frankly, it'll always be don't be a douche because being a douche is, is not good. But don't be a douche. Don't yeah, be a douche. don't be a yeah. douche. Hey, uh, I do have a quick review. This is cool. The title of the review is SEO help for sure. And this review is, of course, Five stars. Woo! Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. That, that works. <laughs> it was by by King Beaks from you know, uh, from from the U.S. It says leaving you all reviews all over the place. So a big punch in the face to me. Laugh out loud. Keep up the great work. Punch in the face to you, man, King Beaks. <laughs> that is awesome. So uh, we've got a really good article for you today. But before we get to the article, we missed a little bit. If you have an electronic device or you have some sort of you're in front of a computer or something and you could tweet. Here's what we'd like you to tweet. Go ahead and tweet. Um, uh, make sure you do at Best SEO Podcast, at eWeb Results. This is, use hashtag SEO Podcast. And go ahead and use um, at AB, so that's Alpha Beta 80, because we're going to be covering an article by Alec Ber Beresovich, Ale Beresovich. 
And uh, as we cover that article, um, you can tweet about it. So go ahead and do that. We really appreciate it. Um, let's see. Next we have, hey, if this is the first time you've listened to the podcast, howdy and welcome to the podcast. Um, you're going to get two things today. You're going to get the potatoes of the podcast. That's what's happening right now. Potatoes. And then we're going to get into the meat. How are they cooked? So they're cooked the most delicious way possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that depends on your fla your taste. How do you want them cooked? We got people tuned in with us on Facebook Live. <laughs> Let us know how you like your potatoes cooked. We like them. Uh, uh, apparently, there's a number of listeners who like them cooked quickly, <laughs> so that we can get to the meat of the podcast really quickly. All right. So I've got a, a little bit of news. Um, Rand Fishkin uh, is stepping away from the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, yeah, it, he's been there a long time. He's still going to stay at the company. He's just not going to be CEO. He likes to do the stuff that he does and not the pe manage the people's stuff. Uh, so punch in the face to you. That's a great, great step uh, when you get to focus on what you want to focus on. Um, and then next, so uh, Google Search Console may have a bug. If you've got a big drop in your average p position metric as of July 13th, there's a whole lot of buzz. Uh, people are looking at it, trying to figure out what's going on, and uh, you know. So also, Google AdWords just changed today, at least on me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I heard you're like, oh, I'm on a different platform. How to get back? Yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, haven't tested it out, but uh, changed today, and uh, we'll see where it goes. So so yeah, what I read is there was at least seven things on the new platform that the old platform didn't have, and so uh, maybe we'll cover that article next time because that you'll have had time to kind of mess around with it and. Yeah, yeah, no, I, wa I watched the rollout of it, of what's, right. what was going to happen, but right. it actually hit me, and I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready to actually use yeah. it yet. Um, if you're a PHP genius, I've kind of sidestepped some of our stuff here. If you're a PHP genius or a WordPress guru, uh, we're probably looking for you. Go ahead and submit an audio resume at 713-510-7846 if you're interested in a free comprehensive website profit analysis. You can get that at our website, eWebResults. Dot com. All right, so I think you, you got some patifs, right? Well, I got some patifs, but I wanted to ask a question. Yeah, okay. One of the interesting things that you shared with me is on the audio resumes. What is the percentage of people oh. that actually do it? Okay, so 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 <laughs> interesting. Like, there's a di there's clearly a difference between us mentioning it in the podcast, right, okay. and that going out to sure. thousands. Uh, you know, uh. We have millions of downloads. Um, we use an audio resume process in our hiring process. And interesting stat. Uh, so basically, we put out an ad. We do not consider anyone who will not follow the process and leave an audio resume. Um, the statistics are somewhere between 10 and 15 percent of the people will leave an audio resume. So what that means is, yeah, 85 to 90 percent of the people have auto selected themselves out of the process. Thank you for making my life easier. It makes it so much easier. It's been great. We're actually interviewing after this, and. Um, you know, quality of people so much better that we'll submit those audio resumes so that 85% of people that auto select out. Thank you. Appreciate it. Save time. It really <laughs> helps. And, and by the way, Matt is a recruiting expert. Like one of his previous companies, the successful one that he mentioned was a recruiting company. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cool that the recruiter came and are like, here, look how we do it. And it's like, uh, if I were doing recruiting, I would do that that way now. So th that's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, all right, I think we've got some patifs for uh, for those people who have checked in with us. Uh, okay, our first one is from Jim McDermott. Um, and this is on Twitter. Punch in the face? Yeah, punch in the <laughs> face to Jim McDermott. Still, <laughs> give him an uppercut, yeah, like okay. straight in, go for it. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. Um, really long, I'm going to kind of summarize what you said, but I actually did this myself after you sent in this comment, and you're absolutely right. Um, Stitcher, uh, <laughs> very hard to submit a, a, uh, a review. Uh, it is kind of hilarious. It does go on and off, um, but we figured out a solution. Yeah, there that. is a solution. So what his note says is when he's on Stitcher trying to leave a review, if he hits a space bar, it doesn't actually put a space bar in the review section. The music actually, goes on. Yeah, it, it turns <laughs> on the podcast, yeah. and then you hit the space bar again, and it turns off the podcast. So you're not able to type anything. Well, you could compress all the words. The solution, so Jim hit, hit me back. I, said, I, I sent him a note on Twitter and said, hey, have you had a chance to get the review submitted? And he's like, no. Jim, here's how you do it. You type up the title in a Word document or some sort of other text-based document, and you copy and paste it in there. 
and then you type up the review and you copy and paste in it. And there is one final step even after you press submit, and hopefully you'll make that review five stars. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, so after you press submit, then you go down to the footer and you click help and you find the support team and you let them know how hard it was to do. That was my suggestion. So yes, hopefully, take credit for yeah, you, you deserve credit for that. I think that's, I think that's good. Well, it was, it was pretty impossible. It, yeah. it, it was pretty impossible and having to work around with technology with technology-based companies. Yeah. yeah, so. Very, yeah, yeah. very frustrating. All right, what else, what do we got? Uh, well, we got Jamie at Punch Cook, in the face to Jamie. Cook Z Life, best SEO postcase. Love you guys, keep it up. Yes. Comics and SEO at. Uh, that's at the title? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Soup Herman. Superman. Superman. Soup. Soup. Delicious. Soup. S O U P. Yeah. Uh, sweet. Love PPC stuff too. Uh, haven't seen much content on YouTube optimization and love to talk about that. Cheers to Dallas. Okay. Yes. We are actually working on a campaign right now where we're going to be doing some uh, video ads on YouTube. So, uh, Stay tuned. We'll it's have, coming soon. We'll have some insights. Yeah. And go back and look for, because we did interview um, Dan, or I think it's Dane Golden. Uh, he's a, he's a, a, like a YouTube aficionado. So uh, kind of search for that and you'll find it. So if you search like YouTube Dane, Dan Golden uh, SEO podcast, you'll find it and, and go ahead and check that out. Uh, we got two more real All right. quick. We'll jump into the meat pretty quick. Pretty Here's, soon, yes. Yeah, so uh, I... Um, this guy is Olaf Maximilian Poppy. Five stars. Yeah, five <laughs> stars. Yeah, he included the, the, the five star icon in his, uh, in his tweet. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and he does have a question. He does have a question. What do you do with content driving lots of traffic, which unfortunately mostly is irrelevant? So we mm -hmm. have a situation like this. It, back in the day, we were doing a, a lot more IT. We still do some IT. Uh, and when I came across a problem that took me a while to solve, I would actually put out a post on how to solve that problem. So we actually get significant amount of traffic for how to get emails to go out of AT&T, right? Um, so that's, that's the exact kind of situation. It's irrelevant for our business, certainly our business in the direction that we're going now. So what do you do with that traffic? That's a good question. What I would suggest that you, you got an idea? I know what I would do. All I right. want to hear what you would do, and I'll tell well, you what I do. Okay, or so you want to hear what yeah, I do? Yeah, well, let's hear what you would do. Yeah. Well, me personally, mm -hmm. um, I would, uh, if I knew where that traffic was coming from and why I was getting that, might build an info product around that and oh. sell them some information on what to do with it. So he or is, redirect as an affiliate marketer. He is actually a serial <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> His first thought is there's a way to monetize that There's traffic. a way to monetize all traffic, I can tell you that. By yeah. that, by the way, that is the logic you want working for your campaign. <laughs> um, so there's really kind of two things you can do. So one of the things with a lot of uh, rank brain and what's going on with Google in terms of uh, context is you might want to get rid of those pages. Now I know that can be painful because because there's traffic there, but if you're looking at your overall SEO, um, it, it actually could be damaging because you're not, you're, you have irrelevant content, right? So I'm making that assumption. The other is, is to figure out how to blend that content in another direction, yes. right? So how do you, how do I tie AT&T email um, content about, you know, eWeb results? And I, I certainly could, you know, hosting is part of what we do for our customers. And so if we wanted to go pursue email customers, then we could blend this in and like, if you're having this problem, you really should be asking your hosting company and you, we would answer that for you. Well, I, I mean, I think the biggest thing is why are you getting that traffic? Right. Like there's a reason you're getting it. So, so identifying the source and then figuring out what to do with it or to tweak it or to model it and use that idea or that concept in a way that can benefit you. So yep. the, you, you, gotta, you gotta understand why you're getting that irrelevant yep. traffic and figure out what the source of it is because uh, all traffic is valuable, uh, just depends how you look at it. And so. you, you mentioned affiliate, that would be a, just a quick and easy, if, if it has some sort of product-based thing that you could create an affiliate account with Amazon, right? And then just send them in that direction for Amazon, like monetize it as if it were a blog. My guess is, is that it's kind of like us, where you're getting this AT&T email traffic and it's not really relevant to your business and I don't really know how to, it's like obvious how to monetize it. So um, punch in the face to you. Um, that was Olaf. Olaf. Yes. Not, not, not the one from uh, Frozen, I'm sure. All right, so that's our patifs. That is the potatoes of the podcast. It is now time to get in the meat. Um, so we've got this article. It's, it's the four most important ranking factors according to SEO industry studies. And this is by 
Ale Beresevich. So we've covered articles by Ale before. Uh, he does some great work. He's actually compiled and kind of put some really um, fundamental information together about, uh, about these top four ranking factors. Now, where did they come from? They came from studies by Search Metrics, Backlinko, and SEO Power Suite. So those are really powerful. I've looked at Search Metrics before. Um, I know what Search Metrics, I, what I've seen, I, I didn't actually go back and kind of confirm this on these particular articles. What I know I've seen and what I'm guessing went into this is they actually just did searches for relevant key phrases and then compiled statistics about the first, second, third place, all the way through, I think it was the 20th position and like, and compiled this information. So Backlinko, I, I, I've read their articles. I love what they do over there. I think they're great. Yeah. So I, yeah. I just want to give a punch in the face to them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so number one is content. So content is obviously one of the most important. We talk about content king. Actually, I've been talking about content as king for since the dawn of SEO, basically. Uh, as soon as they kind of figured out that link stuffing and and uh, and, and that there, there are all these nefarious uh, tactics that SEOers were going to use like okay now we got to get fat focused on content yeah <laughs> so so um, it's it's even more important than it used to be and and what's actually more important is um, relevant content written in that natural language we always say on this podcast as long as you're providing a good experience to the Google user Google is going to look favorably upon you True. and what has just come to light with rank brain and as you look at these results and as these reports indicate is more thorough content that completely covers the, the subject matter, the better. Um, and so that's what this really goes into. This is, this is some interesting stats that they found. That only 53% of the top 20 queries have keywords, and these are the people, the top 20 placements, right? Have keywords in their title tag. Less than 40% of the landing pages have keywords in their H1 tags. And that number has been dropping. So I know why that is. It's often said that, that uh, your title tag should have your keywords in it. And, and even despite this, it really should. Um, your H1 tag should have your keyword in it. And despite what this indicates, you really should. Um, but what it's more importantly saying is that the content is more important than those kind of SEO checkboxes. So you can no longer be just an SEO checkbox person. You've got to be a comprehensive content creator. So, yeah. so, so Google's looking at... Um, uh, user experience. Right. So they're looking at, is this information helpful? Uh, 80, 90% of the searches are kind of uh, question-based or right. inquiry-based searches. And so are you answering the question of your reader or what they're looking for? And that's why the length of the articles is getting longer, the more depth yep. is getting better, the 500 page articles for SEO aren't as effective. Uh, I think in this article, I'm jumping around, but 35 page word articles converting really well. Yep. I even uh, could say 5,000 5, word articles or even longer yep. could convert even better if it's high quality content. Google's gonna uh, push you up to the top of the pile. Yeah, so. So, it, so if you think about kind of long tail phrases and how people might ask questions into uh, OK Google, right? Uh, hopefully I didn't turn that on for anyone. <laughs> and, and how it might actually impact, uh, how that's gonna impact the, the, the variations that you really need to cover in that kind of main keyword topic. So you identify the main keyword, write great content. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, this was pretty interesting. So the article, there was one article they did a search about uh, golden retrievers and the one that was second place under Wikipedia. And this is about golden retrievers, right? Like pretty dog, I like <laughs> them, you feed them, you know, you can see that it could be really short content. It's 3,500 words. That's how they ended up under Wikipedia. Uh -huh. right? I think that's good. And that's the one that you, I think, mentioned. Yeah, so one of the things that I'm actually seeing in this article that I think you can maybe speak to, and we were discussing this earlier this week, right. was infographic. Infographics impact and how important they are. So they're, they're listing this right here. And so I, I thought you could maybe speak to that. Well, so yeah, if you're looking at putting together a 3,500 word article about um, golden retrievers, you kind of need to be Data. coming up with <laughs> stuff to put in there, to stuff in there, right? Um, it needs to be good content. It needs to answer all the questions somebody might have about a golden retriever. And an infographic is, is, is serves a couple of purposes. One, it's that additional content in, an, in another form of media. In this case, the media is images, right? Even though it's an infographic. Infographics are easily shareable, right? They're things that you can put on Pinterest, you can use on Instagram, um, and they're really engaging. Who doesn't like a good infographic? I'm sure there's one of you out there and you actually read every word of the 3,500 word article, so everybody wins, right? 
Um, but yeah, infographics are really important. Now, in each of these, kind of we're going through these four points, um, Ale actually put five stars. Five stars. Ale actually put together. <laughs> oh, I got. Now I'm getting rated on my answers. Okay. I, I like that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new dynamic. Um, he says recommend recommendations on you know what to do, right? So how to optimize based on this content. It says first find and fix thin content. Go onto your website, figure out where the thin content is. If you happen to be in WordPress, there's plugins that'll tell you how many pa how many words are on a particular page. Look for those. Uh, pages with low quantity of words. Um, we use SEO Quake. It's a plugin that goes into Chrome. When you right click and open up SEO Quake, it'll tell you how many words are on that page. It also gives you a whole slew of very valuable SEO related information. Keyword Talk density. Keyword densities of, of you know single keyword, uh, dual, dual keyword, key phrase, uh, threes, yeah. right? Um, and then also we'll kind of talk about H1 tags, those other things that they say are not important, but I would argue are still very valuable. Next, explore fewer topics in greater detail. So one of the things that we've done for clients who have joined us and they've got this kind of relatively thin content, if it's related, then we're starting to put that content and consolidate those into pages. So it does two, that actually does two things. Um, it shows Google new content because you've kind of shifted it around. It's not dupe content, even though you copied it over, because you were taking that other page down and 301 redirecting it. It just is a new format of a page. It's longer content, greater, uh, greater. We were uh, talking about that earlier this week as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. like if you have supporting content and like you have a main, like how does that look? Yeah, right. So yeah, yeah. So, so some of our products are are you know what are the additional articles that we might put to support a, a particular key phrase? And on you've got yeah. uh, on page SEO, you've got to be cognizant of of what those articles might look like. And should you not be writing those articles or blog posts, if you will, should you just be augmenting your content? So, so, so speak to that, because I think I, I'm muddying the water here a little bit. So you have on-page SEO, and then you're doing articles and blog content. Uh, in addition to that, the debate was, should you have on-page SEO and support articles, or when do you take the blogs and maybe combine them in to the on-page SEO, not a separate support article. So, speak so, to that. so, so you can't do this in a vacuum, right? Sure. So that's the, that's the problem. You cannot do this in a vacuum. Um, you want to have good content. It depends on where you're placing. So, are you writing these articles so that uh, you have something to push out to social media, which this talks about, something mm -hmm. that you do, should do, um, or are you just writing this content to kind of go after a longer tail uh, tail key phrase? Um, and you, you're going to have to make a judgment call. It's going to be a judgment call on whether I should add it here or put it over there. Um, if you think you can put together a good 600 keyword article that doesn't necessarily infringe or expands on this content, then you very well may want to put that blog article. But the other thing is blog articles are really good for promoting, um, whether it's social media, uh, whether it's a paid campaign, whether it's through your email uh, campaigns, you know, there's value in those that is separate from the SEO. So in general, it, if you're not ranking well, you probably want to be further flushing out your target page. Five another stars. another five stars. <laughs> All right. So his number two was backlinks. And we actually covered this in the tip from our previous podcast where um, getting inbound links, you, you, it's, not, it's no longer, it used to be that the quantity didn't really matter um, what quality they were, but a large quantity had a big impact. And so that's not that hard for Google to figure out that it's easy to hire people in India and, and get them to create lots of backlinks and they're all crap, and so that, that's done. Um, you want quantity, but you want all of the quantity to be quality. I don't know if you've got, one of the keys I saw here was create content that people crave. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, to speak to backlinks, uh, just really quickly, yeah. I think uh, it might behoove us to maybe do a, a special little whiteboard presentation on kind of how backlinks work, right. and, and, and that is kind of my thought there. Um, like authority links, authority right. domains. Um, if you're buying old domains to try to get some SEO juice, uh, EDUs are right. really big. We're going to go into some more of that detail, but I would, I think that that might. That's, yeah, the that's worth to, the whole, whole podcast. Uh, yeah, that, there, there's a lot there, but yeah, basically high quality links are better. So if you get them from EDU sites as well, you're going to have more authority, so you can get a lot less. Uh, backlinks as opposed to quantity and also if you're buying these backlinks be very careful yeah, yeah. because uh, Google can see it um, when you look at some of this analytical data of a site that's kind of going like this and then goes like this 
it's real easy to see that it's not organic. By the way, for those of you listening, he did a flat line and then it jumped way up. <laughs> 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 but we can talk, backlinks is kind of, I think, a whole podcast in itself. Or a month of podcasts, yeah. potentially. Yeah. But, but social signals. Yeah. Okay, social signals are starting to be a lot bigger. So engagement in your contact, doing social media content, those 500 uh, little kind of blurbs right, articles, are really yep. good there. I think blogs moving towards 2,000 plus, I think is good. Um, uh, but you know, the world's changing yeah. and, and you just gotta kind of change with it. And what Google's looking for, again, is relevant content and relevant links. So that, I mean, if you focus on that, you're never gonna steer yourself wrong. Absolutely, so. And, and so his recommendation on how to optimize for this was um, use software to, automate, uh, to, to audit your link profiles. Um, you wanna monitor how many links are coming back to you and what the quality of those links are. Uh, and you wanna reach out to high quality partners for backlinks. Here's a pro tip. Um, you should also do uh, run an audit on the link profile of your competitor and look at what they have that would be very easy for you to get because they probably have stuff that would be of reasonable value which would be pretty easy to get. Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my thoughts on that is uh, anytime you're building a new campaign, um, I think everybody sometimes builds in a vacuum. They think about keywords or, or things that they're going after and they don't look at what's already working with their competitors and how to take that and then take it to the next level. Right, you know, right. So. Yeah, so uh, obviously competitive research is really good. I thought I had, all right, so next, this is number three mobile first user experience. So Google indexes first mobile. Uh, if you didn't know that, you know that now, right? So um, the, 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 the concept of responsive versus having a separate version of your mobile website, you can do whichever you want. There's value to having responsive because the SEO effort that you put into your uh, desktop version of your website, once you make it responsive, providing you're not like dropping tons of content, um, when you make it mobile, because that's one of the things that tends to happen, is like, oh, this image doesn't work on a mobile platform, so we're gonna pull this out. So you don't wanna pull out all images, obviously you don't wanna pull out text, you can, but you don't wanna do that. So Google's actually um, looking at your mobile, uh, mobile first. So 85% of the websites uh, now, this is on the internet, meet Google's criteria for being mobile friendly. So if you don't know if your website's mobile friendly, go Google the phrase Google mobile friendly, you'll come up with a, a, a tool where you can enter your website. Or you can just pull it up on your phone <laughs> <laughs> and you can look and if you have to open it up like this, not mobile friendly. Yeah, so. yeah. And that's one of the criteria that Google looks at is are the, are the um, pieces, uh, are the points where you, the, the objects that you can click through, uh, are they correctly sized? And I don't know if this is the best time, but I'm gonna insert this now. So when you're looking at mobile, what's really important is research the con uh, concept above the line and below the line, or below right. the fold and below the fold. Right. And basically you need your, you need your CTAs, your, uh, your benefits, uh, and your call to act, well, your call to action yep. and your benefits above the line when they land on it, because um, people will hit the site if it takes a second to load and you don't have that, um, they're gonna jump. So right. if you're looking at conversions, there's definitely a lot you can do, and that's where I see the biggest problems is on mobile sites. Not everything's above the fold, and it's uh, not, and, and they're just not designing with intent, right? They're yeah. not creating the mobile yeah. with intent. Now, here's a warning that they gave: if you are building a separate mobile application, right, and if that mobile application, uh, not really application, a mobile version of your website, and if it's not ready, do not launch it prematurely, because because they're indexing the mobile version first, it can s negatively impact your, your actual uh, regular version. So how do you optimize looking at uh, first mobile first user experience? Google Search Console, it'll tell you if you've got a, a mobile version of your website. Um, it's got a structured data test. So like if you've got schema and you put it on your uh, desktop version, it's not on your mobile version, uh, then it'll let you know. Uh, and then in um, Google Search Console, there is a TXT text testing tool uh, that will help you as well. And then finally, uh, Page Insights can give you that. And finally, number four, this is other technical factors, right? So this is four most important ranking factors according to the SEO industry study. And so if we kind of go through these, number one was content, number two was backlinks, number three, mobile first user experience, and finally, other technical factors. We can blow through these. Um, encryption is important. There's a strong correlation between being encrypted and being placed well on a Google ranking. You could argue that that's because those people who are focused on Google ranking are doing the smart thing and switching over to HTTPS, 
um, or you could just say it's something I need to do and stop putting it off and get it done. It's actually not that hard. We could actually help you with that. Um, H1 and H2 headings. So despite the fact that the keywords weren't necessarily in them, there is strong correlation that H1s and H2s exist in those pages that place well uh, in Google. Anchor text. So you want to make sure you do not risk a penguin penalty. You don't want to get the penguin smackdown. Those little flippers can hurt your website. Exactly. It's painful. <laughs> um, so, uh, but you want to be aware of your anchor text and make sure you've got a good distribution of things that are linking to you. Like in our case for SEO Houston, we just don't want every link to us to be SEO Houston. We need like click here have variety. and eWeb and mm. internet marketing company, all of those things. Uh -huh. Interstitials. So those are when you have a pop-up on your website. Um, Google has said, no, don't do that, especially on mobile versions. Um, so be really careful about what you're doing with those. So, so with that, uh, I've had a lot of debates with people in the industry as far as uh, user experience. Yes. Like, and if, and if it's an annoyance, yeah. you know, um, and how well does it convert and how does it represent your brand? So there's a big debate out there on pop-ups and light boxes as you're leaving the site, whether it's a good thing or not. Right. And, and I've seen data both ways. Um, but that that's up in the air, and I think it's on a situational basis. In, to industry what to do. situation where mm -hmm. you sit in the industry, yeah. all all sorts of things. Absolutely. And one other kind of tip that I had, just kind of when we were talking about kind of pro tips, especially on on mobile and, right. and that sort of thing, is um, a lot of people want to get stuff going really quickly, and um, they don't have their site complete, and they want to run ads and spend money to a site that's Ooh. not going to convert Ooh. there's two pieces of every pie okay yeah. or, or two pieces of the pie right and if you are not uh making sure that that landing page is converting you are wasting money and that's one of the biggest challenges that no, i no. see with most yeah. campaigns so uh, just quick tip out there to, to all you home gamers just so you know our approach um if your website is not ready for us to send traffic to it um, we'll make a landing page, yes. right? And, you know, a separate mm -hmm. landing focus page, landing slash sales page. So, um, introduce. So, how to optimize the other technical factors? One, turn on your SSL certificate. Come on, get over it. It's not that big a deal. Do um, it. Mm -hmm. Make use of H two tags, right? Um, let's see, diverse semant semantically relevant anchor text. So, like, make sure the anchor text in your site because you actually have absolute control over that. And you know, whenever you're kind of doing link building efforts, kind of driving people to you, uh, make sure that happens. And then remove uh, interstitials. By the way, these are, like I said, when I looked at the search metrics uh, report, this is a long time ago, uh, probably about a year ago, it was just phenomenally interesting, the details that are in it. So uh, I definitely recommend going and checking out search metrics uh, reports. They are an intelligent company. You will have to give your email address in order to get to that report. Um, which is it which is I think is there isn't actually a good thing so all right so that is the meat of the potato of the potatoes no that is that the was, meat that was the meat of the podcast um, let's see what we need to do to wrap up here so let's just say this if you liked this podcast and we hope you do um, please go ahead and connect with us on the profiles we mentioned earlier and also go ahead and share this podcast with three people that you know um, and you can do that right now. We would really I, appreciate I, that. I would appreciate this uh, yeah. for, for first time in uh, front of an audience yeah. here. So, yeah. yeah. Let us know how Matt did. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> if it was positive. All right. Let's <laughs> let's use mom's rule. <laughs> no, Actually, I want to know. Yeah, I want to know. Give it, give it to me. Yeah. yeah. Tell me if it's horrible. Tell yeah. me what you want to hear about. Yeah. So. yeah I, I think it went really good. So I, I'm, I'm excited. Um, let's see, if you're interested in growing your business with the largest, simplest marketing tool on the planet, which is the internet. Oh yes, the internet, that's, yeah. that's that thing. Call, <laughs> call eWeb Results for increased revenue in your business. Our phone number is 713-592-6724. If you're interested, and that just went to sleep, if you're interested, um, so when I talk about uh, using the internet to grow your business, uh, we have a program and that program is called Instant Leads Guaranteed. And what that is, is we were talking about uh, the, the screen behind the stuff. I got it, don't, I got it, I got it, I got it, right he's, here. Look at that, I he's useful. It. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might not, it, it might not be showing well, but we can show it to the Facebook audience. Don't worry, right. don't you worry, do we're brand, Brandon's happening, don't worry. <laughs> um, so Instant Leads Guaranteed is, is really kind of part of what Matt was talking about. When you're sending traffic somewhere, it needs to go to uh, a page that's gonna convert. Uh, and it's all about pay-per-click. We can get traffic to your website quickly. 
uh, and we can make it um, and we can make it convert by sending it to a landing page that that is designed to convert. Um, if you have a referral for biz for us, so if that's some somebody who's interested in a website or social media marketing, or they don't understand their analytics, or they would just like some sort of uh, report on on search engine optimization or their pay per click audit go ahead and send them to us. When they pay us, we pay you. So we have that referral program I in like place. I like that, I like that. If you're in Houston and you're networking your business, first, if you're not, I don't know what you're doing. Second, you should be networking your business and you need to go to upsocialnetwork.com um, and join us at a, yes, an event near that you. Is, that's great. That We're, is the next wave of, uh, of networking, networking, business networking. It really, it really is. I, very impressed. Yeah. Very impressed. So yeah. Um, we're shifting all of our clients who will kind of go with us. And I see Nolan says, boom. Um, <laughs> which all those clients will go with us. You get content. What networking group do you go to that you get content? Well, I think it's called Up Social Network. That's the one that gives you content. Um, so so upsocialnetwork.com. Well, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, for me, what, what I saw is you're, you're networking with 50 to 100 people in a room, right? And then it's being broadcasted out, and you're broadcasting your message out to eight thousands, to 10, yeah, eight to ten thousand people. When yeah. I was there, so yeah. I mean, like, what what kind of better way to use your time? I mean, really coming from a, a sales background and right. a marketing background, that's what it's all about: is impacting more people. You know, for for every minute, for, for every, every minute, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, yeah. absolutely. So upsocialnetwork.com. Yeah. All right, so this wraps up our podcast. Great job, Matt. I'm, I'm excited. You're going to be seeing and learning more about Matt as we keep going. Um, we were filmed live here at 5999 West 34th Street, Suite 106, Houston, Texas. Um, if you would like a transcript, a video, or audio of this podcast, you can find that at eWebResults.com. Um, you guys have made us the most popular internet marketing podcast on iTunes. We appreciate all of you. Um, we look for your feedback and uh, until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris, Matt Bertram. Bye bye for now. See ya. <laughs>